الحمد للہ رب العالمین والصلاة والسلام على سید المرسلین اما بعد فاعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم صلاة والسلام علیکہ یا رسول اللہ وعلا آلکہ و اصحابکہ یا حبیب اللہ صلاة والسلام علیکہ یا نبی اللہ وعلا آلکہ و اصحابکہ یا نور اللہ Dear viewers of Madani Channel, you're watching the program that goes by the name of Repentance and today we've brought another new episode for you in which we will be covering different aspects of Repentance and try to develop a better understanding of the concept of Repentance Before we do that, let's first of all listen to a virtue of reciting Durood Sharif, sending peace and salutations upon the Noble Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Alaihi Wasallam It has been stated that whoever recites this Salat, the Prophet has said that whoever recites this Salat upon me, my intercession will become wajib for him, it will become obligatory for him. What is that Salat? Which Salat is that? Allahumma salli ala Muhammadin wa anzilhu al-maq'ada al-muqarraba indaka yawm al-qiyamah. This is the Durood, the Salat, that has been mentioned in this narration that the one who recites this then the intercession of the Prophet والسلام, will become bajib for him on the Day of Judgment. We should also develop a habit of reciting Salat upon the Prophet, send salutations upon the Prophet والسلام, in these words, so that we also become deserving of his intercession on the Day of Judgment and be included amongst those who will attain salvation, who will be the fortunate ones. Sallu ala al-Habib sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam Dear of Madani Channel, there's a beautiful narration before me which highlights the importance and how fortunate those people are who repent in the court of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and in this narration it talks about a revelation that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed upon Sayyiduna Adam alayhi salatu wa salam Allah Almighty said to him through a revelation that, O oh Adam, you left tiredness, afflictions, tribulations, and repentance in inheritance for your children. I will listen to the call of whoever calls me the way I heard you. And he who seeks forgiveness from me, I will grant him because I am close and the one who accepts dua. O oh Adam, I will resurrect those who repent from their graves in such a state that they will be happy and smiling and their dua will be accepted. So dear viewers of Madani Channel, what a beautiful glad tiding we've uh, come across, we've heard about in this narration regarding those who repent, who repent sincerely and wholeheartedly in the court of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will resurrect them in the state of happiness in the state in which they will be happy and pleased and they will be smiling and this indicates that they will be amongst those who will be in peace on the day of judgment when they will be resurrected because if they wouldn't be in peace then they wouldn't be happy they wouldn't be smiling so those people who repent Allah Almighty will resurrect them from their graves in a state in which they will be happy they will be smiling and Allah Almighty accepts their duas so a beautiful tool we've also learned and beautiful formula we've also learned for the acceptance of our, of our du'as. That those who repent wholeheartedly and sincerely in the court of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah Almighty also accepts their du'as. So if, let's suppose, apparently our du'as are not being accepted or if we are worried because of the uh, fact that our du'as are not being accepted or uh, we believe that uh, we're not being given what we are asking for, that this might be the key behind it, that we might not be repenting in the court of Allah Almighty so that we could be amongst those people whose du'as 
would be accepted. So if you want your du'a to be accepted, then repent in the court of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wholeheartedly and sincerely. Insha'Allah Zawajal, your du'as will be answered. Sallu ala al-habib sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. Now, what was the state of our uh, noble elders, rahimahumullah ta'ala, when it came to repentance, when it came to any kind of um, an act of indecency or any such act which in fact is uh, an act of indecency but when a person uh, commits something as such unintentionally then it is not a sin but even upon this uh, very action what would be their reaction and how remorseful they would become let's hear about this Sayyiduna Majma Rahmatullahi Ta'ala once looked up and unintentionally had a glance on a woman who was standing um, at the top of a roof. And he immediately lowered his eyes and felt so ashamed that he vowed to never look up again. Look at his state, look at his taqwa, his piety, that his gaze which fell upon a woman that was unintentionally and once an unintentional gaze is casted upon a non-mahram, and someone returns it back immediately. There's no sin upon him. There's no sin upon uh, gazing or looking at some, uh, at a non-mahram person unintentionally. Provided that a person returns his gaze straight away. His sight straight away. But look at the taqwa, the piety of Sayyidina Majma'a rahmatullahi alayhi. That unintentionally he looks at a woman, at a non-mahram. Straight away looks down. But... He vows that he will never look up again. This is the glory of Awliya Karam Rahimahumullah and the legacy that they leave behind for us to also follow that this is how careful you need to be in regards to staying safe from sins and what approach should we adopt when it comes to repenting. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Holy Quran, وَتُوبُوا إِلَى اللَّهِ جَمِيعًا أَيُّهَا الْمُؤْمِنُونَ لَعَلَّكُمْ تُفْلِحُونَ Meaning, and all of you return in repentance to Allah, O believers, with this hope that you may succeed. And in the commentary of this verse, it has been stated that this ruling is in general, meaning that everyone has been commanded to repent. It means that, O Muslims, the things that you have been commanded for and what you have been abstained from, if you have compromised over them due to being a human being, then repent in the court of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the hope that you will attain salvation. So, a beautiful Madani pearl we learn from this verse, in this commentary, what has been stated, that those things which we've been commanded to do, and those things which we've been commanded to refrain from, if we compromise upon any of them, meaning we... Don't perform those actions which we are meant to or we perform those actions which we are not meant to. Meaning that we compromise upon this faraid of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then what do we need to do is that we repent over them and repent wholeheartedly and sincerely fulfilling all its conditions, all its prerequisites with the hope that we will attain salvation. So this is the beautiful message that we are given in this beautiful verse because there are certain commandments regarding the do's and then certain commandments regarding the don'ts. So performing the do's and staying away from the don'ts is something that completes our iman, that, com that completes our faith and compromising any uh, element of do's or don'ts would entail us uh, being involved in sins and then Repenting over them is something that is required from us, that is needed from us. So once someone repents, inshallah, zawajal, Allah Almighty will forgive him. And the repentance should be on the hope that we will attain salvation. At another place, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ya ayyuhalladheena amanu, tubu ila Allahi tawbatan nasuha. Meaning that, O you who believe, turn to Allah in sincere repentance such that there is no return to sin. Now, in the commentary of this verse, it is stated that, O oh, you who believe, make such sincere repentance in the court of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, whose effects 
are apparent in the action of the one who repents. So, the one who repents through his actions, it should be apparent that this person has repented sincerely and wholeheartedly in the court of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Moreover, that person, the one who repents in the court of Allah Almighty, his life should be filled with the worship of Allah Almighty and his obedience and he should refrain from sins. So these are further uh, those elements that need to be abided by once repentance has been made. Sayyidina Umar bin Khattab an, said to other companions that sincere repentance is the one after which a person does not return towards sin the way milk cannot return back to the others after milk comes out of those others. So this is the comparison of a person who has uh, performed Tawbatun Nasuh, who has performed sincere repentance that he doesn't return back to sins. As milk cannot return back to others after coming out of them. Similarly, a person who performs sincere repentance, he cannot return back to sins in similar fashion. So this is the comparison that of a master, Sayyidina Umar bin Khattab an, gave in relation to a person who repents wholeheartedly and sincerely. Then, and at another place, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Asa rabbukum an yukaffira ankum sayyi'atikum. Meaning, it is near that your Lord will erase your sins. And in the commentary, it is stated that it is near that your Lord Almighty will erase your sins after accepting your repentance. So again, another beautiful glad tiding we've been given in this verse, that once repentance is made, then your past sins are forgiven once Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepts your repentance. And Allah Almighty is the acceptor of repentance. He is the most merciful. He is the most forgiving. He will forgive us once we make sincere repentance. Now, let's listen um, to an account of Sayyiduna Ibrahim bin Adam rahmatullahi ta'ala. You see, our awliya karam rahimahumullah, their mindset was such that through their normal daily routine chores, even through them, they would take uh, such elements through which they could contemplate and ponder upon their hereafter, reflect upon their hereafter. We also, on daily basis, carry out many uh, daily uh, you know, routine tasks, many chores, but what is our state? Even upon those things which in a way um, become necessary upon us, or make it necessary for us to uh, reflect upon our hereafter through them, we don't even uh, take them seriously to reflect upon our hereafter. But our awliya karam rahimahumullah, their approach was such that even through normal daily routine tasks, even through them, they would find those um, elements, they would find those um, you know, uh, angles within those daily routine chores that they would start contemplating their hereafter. They would start reflecting upon their hereafter even through those daily routine tasks. Once Sayyiduna Ibrahim bin Adham rahmatullahi alayhi, went to a public bathroom to take bath because back in those days this was the routine practice in um, a community that they used to be public bathrooms as well and they used to go over there to take bath. The attendant of the bathroom stopped him, asking him for dirham, meaning some money, and said that if you would not pay the dirham, then he would not let him enter. Now, listening to this, Sayyiduna Ibrahim bin Adham, rahmatullahi ta'ala, started crying, started to shed tears, to which the attendant, he got a bit worried, and he very humbly and politely asked him that if you don't have any dirham, if you don't have any money, it's fine, no problem, you can take a bath for free, no problem at all. But Sayyidina Ibrahim bin Adham, rahmatullahi ta'ala, stated that I'm not crying because you stopped me, but the reason was that today I was stopped due to a dirham from entering into this public bathroom in which pious and sinners, both type of people, they take bath. Ah, if I would be stopped from entering paradise, the high residence for the pious due to scarcity of good deeds, due to shortage 
of my good deeds, then what will I do? Look at the beautiful mindset of Sayyiduna Ibrahim bin Adham rahmatullahi ta'ala that he is reflecting upon the fact after being stopped uh, from entering the public bathroom. Once he's asked for money to enter public bathroom, all of a sudden he started to reflect upon hereafter, upon his hereafter, that uh, what would happen if I'm stopped from entering paradise, which is the abode, the highly ranked ab uh, abode for the pious on the day of judgment because of my shortage of my sins. Because on the day of judgment, successful will be the one who will have his book of deeds given in his right hand, who will have the right side of his scale uh, weighing out the left side. He will be successful. And if we are short of good deeds on the day of judgment, and if we are stopped from entering paradise on the day of judgment because of access of our sins or shortage of our good deeds, then what would we do? So this is the mindset of Sayyidina Ibrahim bin Adam rahmatullahi ta'ala that he starts reflecting upon his hereafter as soon as he stopped from entering the public bathroom. This is their mindset. This is how they spend their life. This is how they reflect upon their deeds and their hereafter despite being amongst those who are considered as the highest ranked awliya. And this is one of the reasons why they attained this rank. Because this is how they led their life. This is how they lived their life. This is how cautious and fearful they were in regards to their hereafter. That even through the chores, daily routine works of this world, they would start uh, reflecting upon their hereafter. This was their practice. So where do we stand, uh, dear viewers of Madani Channel? What is our state? Do we have enough good deeds in our book of deeds to be successful in the hereafter? Do we have a very, very, very minimal amount of sins, less sins in our book of deeds that will not make us um, face destruction on the day of judgment? What is our, our state? Have we ever reflected upon our state? We have numerous sins in our book of deeds. We have very, very... Uh, less good deeds in our book of deeds, but yet we are very heedless in regards to over here after. And we've been told through different narrations that the one who repents wholeheartedly in the court of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then no matter how many sins he may have committed, they will be forgiven. Allah Almighty will erase all those sins. So sincere repentance serves as the uh, something that eradicates sins it is eradicator of sins so imagine that we go in the court of allah almighty on the day of judgment with all of our sins being erased how wonderful it would be lest we get stopped from entering paradise because of the access of, of our sins and the reason behind it would be that we wouldn't have made sincere repentance in this dunya when we still had time Ponder upon this, reflect upon this, make sincere repentance in the court of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah Almighty include us amongst those who repent wholeheartedly and sincerely. And may Allah Almighty include amongst those who will be successful in the hereafter, in their graves, and also who are successful in this world. Ameen. Bijahin Nabiyin Ameen. Sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. Sallu ala al Habib. Sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad. صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم Allah, forgive me Allah, forgive me Have mercy on me Guide me Have mercy on me Guide me